Where is it? Okay. He found something. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who found pearls, a pearl of great price, right? So I'm doing like like a diver now because a diver will find. I don't know. Okay, anyway. I don't know how I'm. Oh, I'm looking so sleepy. I'm feeling sleepy, man. The devil is a liar. Father, give me energy. Okay. So he, he blocks off that area and he says, listen, I found, I found, let's say we found about five and it's, it's going to make him rich, right? So it's, 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 it's something that he's so rich in. He knows that he's going to, he's going to have a big income from this. So he blocks off the rest and guess what he's going for? He's going for more. Why? Because he knows the value of these pearls, right? So he found five, but guess what? He wants more. He found five pearls, but he wants more. So he blocks off this area and he, let's say he buys it. He gets all necessary. Um, do you know how long I haven't felt like this sleepy? <laughs> I think I should hide my eyes. He blocks off the lights, maybe it's kind of, I don't know, what's making me sleepy? I'm not sleepy, I'm fine. Okay. He blocks off this area and he's going to look for more. Now that is us. The pearls, the pearl of great price is Christ. The pearl of great price is Christ. So if you find Christ, and you find the treasure and the joy in knowing Jesus, guess what? If you become a child of God, you don't want to keep that for yourself. You want to share that, right? You want to you you want to find more. What does that mean? Okay, just like the man who went looking for more pearls than five. You want to find the kingdom you want okay uh, how to say this you want to see the kingdom of God come into other people's lives you want to see a richness there then you want to find another pearl you want to see the same richness that you accumulated you want to find more and more and more you want you want that fire to catch that is how God, when he's moving by his spirit, quickens his people. That's why you see all these pastors and these evangelists and apostles and everybody in the fivefold ministry basically teaching and preaching. At least I hope that's the reason. Amen. For some, it's just for the fame. But, you know, or some like, to, oh, you know, I have the power. Look at me. Ah, no, we want that power to be found in you so that you could catch fire, you could buy the field that you found your pearl, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is Jesus Christ. So let's say I'm, I found Jesus, amen? I'm buying this area because that's the pearl that I found. And now I want to see other pearls. I want to see if there are other pearls. Are there other people who, who can find Christ? Are there other people who, yeah, I want to see if there's more, all right? So the, that person that I shared with buys off his piece. And now he's looking for more pearls. Yeah, you get it? That's how it is. That's how it works. Because the Father's will is that none perish. So it becomes our will. His will is our will. Amen. And when his will becomes our will, then our thoughts emerge with his thoughts. We can we can connect to the Father like that and know exactly what he wants, what he likes, what he desires, where he's sending us to go, who to go to, what to do. You know, God directs each way that we go. And um that's where he wants us to be in a relationship with him that is so intimate it is so close it is bounded by his very 
spirit that if we keep our eyes on him at all times at all times we are tapped in to the spirit of God what does that mean um, he was saying something I just lost it ah He's going to give a buck. He's going to give a buck. I don't think I said it. He said at all times you'll be tapped in. Something, something. Oh, something so profound. Ah. Okay, those strange. Just leave it. All right. So, he wants to guide us by his spirit so that at all times we're tapped into him. So the same things that he did for Israel in those times, when it comes to be our time, he's able to move because he already has permission. Because his will is our will, our spirit is in sync with him, and he knows that we have permission. He knows that we love him. Make sense? Amen? So God is faithful, and he says that, I hear him saying if he's faithful in much, faithful in much, something in much, let me find that. I didn't find any scripture verses, but you can go and check it out today. He is, fa if faithful in much, if faithful, something if faithful in much, I don't know. Okay, Luke 16, 10. So you'll find, if you knew my story, I had a lot of money long ago. And um, I was very comfortable. And Father let me lose it, broke me down to the dust, and then said, rise up again with me this time. And of course, most of that I had was spent on my girl, but my com my living was comfort. I was comfortable, right? I had my pool. I had this nice four bedroom house. Everything was set up for me very nicely. And Satan says, "Ah, so I'm making her comfortable, and she's got hooked with the, you know, work and the money." So. He said, now she won't operate in the spirit or the gifts of the spirit. And Father says, no, she's mine. The day she received me, she became mine. But I didn't receive him yet. Um, after, well, of course, there were situations that broke me to receive him. But when, the day I received him, he said, no, she's mine. She's not cap captured by any worldly thing anymore. Yes, she will stumble. Yes, but she won't fall. And he took he took me away from that. He made a clay gap. Big gap. My last amount that I spent was something like 90,000 US, something like that. Yeah. Which was a lot of money, right? That's what I had to build my house and start over my life, but... Moving on. So, that, he made that clear gap. So, this was me and my finances, and he did this. <laughs> he made a gap. And then he brought me down to nothing. And he said, you're going to start, but this time you're going to start with me. So, when you're actually built up, it's going to be of me. It's going to be from me. It's going to be on me. It's going to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's the way God wants us. Because if we build our house on the sand, which is the world and every worldly thing, it's going to come crumbling down. In the day of adversity, it's not going to stand. But if we build our house on the rock, glory, hallelujah, Father. If we build our house on the rock, what happens? in the day of adversity that thing stands still nothing can move it amen nothing can move it 
the waves and the winds and the everything must bow to the rock because he has the power and his name is Jesus that name no one can overthrow that name no one can step on well they trample him but you know what I mean when we de when we declare that name and that power in that name things must happen once it's to the glory of God and it does and it is and he already knows our minds and he knows our hearts and he is jealous for those who are his he is jealous you know how nice my eyes are feeling relaxed behind this bright thing the screen God is jealous for his people why he was married to Israel and Israel went away from him he was he jealous for her too yes so now that you have become and you are spiritual Israel is God jealous for you you think <laughs> you better bet your bottom dollar he is jealous for you if you put anything my eyes feel so comfortable behind this thing I'm keeping it hopefully you can see my eyes through it I don't know once you put God first he has no problem if you put God second hello he is our beloved he is our first love there there is no putting him second he is first he's above all things and he's before all things so we always have to maintain our place that he Jesus Christ is the master that he is the father and we are the kid we are the children he is the master and we're the servant yeah that's right we're the servant he's the king and we're the heir if you don't listen to the king you don't get anything if you show yourself to be rebellious you're in trouble you're in trouble He's writing you off the will. Do you want to be on the will or off the will? Today, if you hear his voice, he says, harden not your heart. Because he desires more workers in his vineyard. He, he's out there from the early morning to the late noon to the 3 o'clock in the evening to the 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock point till the 11th hour. He is there and he is recruiting. He's recruiting laborers in his vineyard. He says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So it's just like that, that little demonstration I did there. I, I was drawing on the table like if you could see that. <laughs> now I feel stupid. Okay. So, I just forgot to push the camera down. But, um, he says, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. This is his invitation. If you needed an invitation to work in the kingdom of God, this is it. Um, just a sec, okay? One moment. One moment. Why do I do what I do? Because Jesus is Lord because he died for me because he first loved me because he's Abba Father because he he redeemed my soul and now I'm grateful and I want to see him crowned with as many souls as he made <laughs> Could you imagine that? Crowning him with all crowns 
each soul that he made comes to him that's gonna be the best day ever but of course we know that he already said it in his word just like Judas betrayed Jesus just like Satan um, betrayed God yeah just like just like um, Cain betrayed his brother Abel and killed him I heard him saying ah I heard him saying wait a little while until the rest of your brethren is killed that's what I heard just like he he was betrayed by his own people we're going to be betrayed that is inevitable but that's all right we're going to be we're going to be cast out because cast out of this world because our home is not here our home is heaven and we already know that our spirit man knows that so if you were looking for an invitation to Christ this is the <laughs> I did it wrong did I wait this is the invitation I can fix that don't worry the Bible says no greater love has any man than he who laid his life down for his for his what for his sheep do you know anybody else who died for you do you I'm not talking suicide okay this kind of death causes the death of the flesh and the life of the spirit to rise within do you know anybody else who would be crucified for you there is only one name under heaven and earth by which we are saved and that name is Jesus and father right now all he's doing is sending out the invitation he's lifting the sign and he's saying hey workers wanted rewards rewards of eternal life and in, in heaven with me forever do we have any takers do we want um does anybody want the job and he says lay down your life for me and you'll inherit eternal life and father is gently calling us to the cross to surrender but some people say so here we go this is supposed to work I hope yes it's supposed to work this is the invitation amen if you're looking for an invitation this is the invitation welcome welcome to the kingdom of heaven father is putting out a sign and he's saying hey I got a sign here workers wanted workers wanted in the kingdom of heaven will you will you come look for the pearls and not just but you'll have enough when you find that pearl you'll have enough to what to buy that area and to search for more amen so I wrote it the other way around I wrote it like this Oh, it works this way. Oh, it's this way. How come it shows differently? You guys see invitation here, but on the other screen, look. It's kind of weird. So anyway, this is the invitation to come into the vineyard. Come into the vineyard and be hired by Jesus Christ. He wants laborers in his vineyard. The same treasure you found is the same treasure he wants you to go and share with others so that they could also come, find the treasure, and go look for treasure themselves. And imagine if every person did this, what would happen? The devil might go nuts. He might be like, well, you know. He's going to be like, Ah, oh, shucks. They found their calling. They found their calling. See? They know the Father. They've, they've now, they're not tied up in things that they could see, but they're actually thinking spiritually. 
Oh, and he's going to scream because I heard him scream already. I heard him growl. But this is the mindset that Adam and Eve had. This is the mindset that Adam and Eve had in the beginning. They were enjoying life with God because there was nothing to worry about. But then Satan comes and he says, you know, I don't like that. He was jealous. Jealousy brought him there. Jealousy. Jealousy has no good rewards. None. It stirs up wrath. The Bible says where there is jealousy, there's every kind of evil. I hear him saying the Lord repented of his evil. Huh? Just now. Let me just test that. Yep, the Lord repented of his evil. Exodus 32, 14. King James Version. So the Feast of Tabernacles is coming. Oh, shut up, you creepy thing. Exodus 32, 14. Verse 13, remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of you will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he taught to do unto his people. So, verse 15, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tablets of testimony were in his hand, and the tablets were written on both the sides, on one side and on the other they were written. Verse 16, And the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tablets. All right, and it said, let's read a little bit more, okay? We're reading verse 16, and the, okay, we just read that. Verse 17 of Exodus 32, And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, they said unto Moses, he said unto Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. War? Think about that for a minute. When a war is coming, what happens? There's a lot of exchange, right? There's a lot of banter. There's a lot of, not debates really, but there's a lot of bad things passing. And these people, God had brought them out of Egypt to worship him, but now they were turning against him. So verse 18, and he said, this is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. 19. And it came to pass, as he came nigh unto the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger was waxed hot, and he cast the, table, the tables out of his hands, and broke them in the mount. Verse 20. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire. And ground it to powder. And strode it upon the water. And made the children of Israel drink of it. But these are man of God. Verse 21. And Moses said to Aaron, What did these people unto thee? that thou hast brought such a great sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot, for thou knowest the people, and they are set in mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever has any gold, 
Let them break it off. So give it to me and cast it in fire. And there came out this calf. Poof. This calf came out. Verse 25. Then when Moses saw that the people were naked. Party, you know, business as usual. Orgies and everything going on there. Now check this out. But they were another kind of naked too. They were the kind that Jesus spoke about in Revelations. It says, for the, when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And verse 27. And he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother his companion and every man his neighbor and the children of levi did according to the word of moses and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men and verse 29 for moses had said consecrate yourselves this day to the lord even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And verse 30, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You've sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Preaventure I shall make atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Verse 32, Yea, now, if thou wilt forgive their sin. Moses is begging for the people. That's what Jesus does for us. He's the mediator. Amen? That's what his blood does. Okay. And verse 32, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin. And if not, blot me, I pray, out of thy book which thou hast written. Verse 34, Therefore now go and lead the people unto the place which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day I will visit, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. That's not good. Here's what God says. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they had made the calf which Aaron made. Amen. That's the reading. So God is calling his people to be consecrated to him, to live a life that is holy and just, pure to him. Not bowing down to idols or other gods. Not uh, playing half in the world, half out. God wants a whole consecrated. He wants a faithful wife, a faithful people. Amen. And he's calling each one of us. His, how did I write? I think it's this way, right? Yeah. His invitation, and then this way. His invitation to the body of Christ this is the invitation if you needed an invitation God is passing out an invitation right now he says if you needed a sign this is the sign see what it says it says invitation it says invitation um, it says invitation amen so God is saying who would like to come and work in my kingdom come he says, come, come on, flee from that thing that you're doing. Flee from it. Find a treasure. 
find a pearl of great price and buy that piece of land that you found it. Because one that pearl that you find is going to be enough. And then he says, go and you'll find more treasure and more and more. Because the kingdom of heaven is like a fire that a man set and it just began to lit. Zip, 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 zip. <laughs> um, like a seed that a farmer sows on good ground and bad ground. All kind of ground. Just scatter the seeds and wherever they grow, they grow. Now where the seed is on the good ground, there's increase. Increase of what? What? The fruits of the Spirit. More souls in the kingdom. There's an increase to the glory of God. But God says on the seed, the seeds that were sown in other places, the birds came and ate them and all of that kind of craziness, you know, the thorns choked them and some on the wayside and, you know, it's not good. So Father says, plant those seeds. He said, you sow, you sow and let the wheat grow with the tears just for now. Just permit it for now. Because if you uproot the tears, you're going to uproot the wheat. Why is he saying that? Because it's, it's intertwined. There are people in the world, but they're waiting for the word that they could loose and come and set free, be set free. Amen. God is saying, don't uproot the tears, but let them grow with each other. And it's the word that is able to divide the very, the closest things that you have. Bone and marrow, that's one thing. Um, the soul and the spirit. Well, the soul is the spirit and the body, all right? So the, the Word of God is able to separate it. There's a separation going on. Let Jesus do the separation. Let Jesus divide by the Word. Amen, Brother Jerry and Sister Betty, Brother Mike and Ryan and Bill and Thomas. God is saying, let Him do the separation. Your job is to give the Word. And of course, he does some in due season. Is it showing? No. Oh, it's going to show there. Yeah? And then, here. Why do I have to... This is so weird. I have to flip it. <laughs> anyway. So, <clears throat> from today begins the the mark of a new journey just like how six years ago it became for me where excuse me a command is hiccup to go in jesus name hey no more go in jesus name <laughs> excuse me i needed to do that i'm sorry uh Hey! I eat too fast. I know I, I rushed all my food. Do I have water? Somewhere? No. Go in Jesus' name and don't come back. This show is still there. Okay, I'm speaking fast as well. Okay, let's just get through this. So. Oh, I can't. Okay, let me just get some water. I didn't drink water too, did I? Go in the name of Jesus. Come on. All right. So, like today, six... six oh, I don't know. Somebody pray for me right now. Pray for my hiccups. When, six years ago, when I, the six years ago, when I surrendered to Father, two years after grieving for my girl, it was exactly two o'clock, two o'clock in the evening, oh, this is annoying. This makes you feel very, very silly. Um, 
It was two o'clock in the evening, and it was after a seven-day fast, seven hours per day. Um, uh, I know I need to belch really hard, which is probably very disgusting, and... I don't want to do it. Can I? <laughs> okay, so I surrendered. That was it. It was <laughs> It was the end of a 7-day fast, 7 hours per day. At the 7th hour of the day, there was a lemon of sevens. The roof of my room seemed to disappear. And I saw father, I like about a six foot two man, from his short, from his short, from about here, his robe is from here to his ankles in white. His face was like white light. All around him, ugh, all around him were multitudes of angels. This, there was like clouds around him that like when a sunset um, is fading like that golden it was all around him my girl was at his feet she would have been two years two years old she spoke to me and she said mom it's time to go on again it's time to be happy live again smile again <laughs> she, come on she didn't say that all right All hiccups, I command you out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me. I know I need to boop really hard, but I don't want to do that on here. So, um, She said, Mom, it's time to live again and smile again. I'm safe. I'm happy. She was speaking out of her mind, not her mouth. And then, like, I felt like a relief. Because I was grieving for her for two years. And um, I remember, well, almost two years, right? Um, it would have been two years. It would have been two years. No, it's almost two years. The following January would have been two years. So this was this time, 2012. So she said to me, you know, she's happy and she's safe where she is. And Jesus, Jesus, his face was like a white light. That was all I saw, a white light. And he looks into my direction. And he says, peace unto you and life and that was it everything that I was dealing with everything that was pulling me down and threatening to kill me which was grief how many know that stress can kill you how many knows that <gasps> sorry oh this is really bad um that I don't know what I'm looking for <gasps> I need some water um that Stress, stress can kill you when you don't sleep or when you don't eat. Stress can, stress is a killer. Okay, so all of that, everything that was on me just flew off. I felt like someone took the world off my shoulders. <laughs> this is never going to be forgotten, I think. So I felt so light and so happy. And of course, after the vision, just... Pfft, you know, the, the roof was there again. I was like, did that just happen? And it was, I mean, it was a whole alignment of sevens. I'll never forget that. It was a whole alignment of sevens. So I'm going to release this word onto you now. And it's up to you. 
if you want to be used by the Lord to make yourself available because this is going to prepare you spiritually it's going to amplify the spirit of God in you that I know because I've done it multiple times whenever I'm feeling weak in the spirit I do it Betty oh Oh, oh my goodness, I'm yawning, I'm hiccuping, am I going to sneeze next? No. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many. And Father says, it's up to you if you want to be one of the chosen. It's up to you. He's not going to force. But he's calling each one. So just like this invitation... was given yeah and you see the alignment of 777 that was the seven the seven days I fasted I fasted for the seven hours per day and the seventh hour on the seventh day of the week that my my vision my experience whatever you want to call that happened father says this is the invitation if you want to receive that from from to, from tonight from tonight oh let's see okay from seven o'clock in the morning yeah okay it's better from seven o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the e evening you're not going to be eating anything but fruits and vegetables and water in its raw form nothing nothing cooked and no leaven so this is what I did so the seventh day days that I fasted for the seven hours per day hey and the seventh hour of that se seven day that I finished and the seventh day was actually the Sabbath I think so check this out so you're gonna you're, you're not going to eat anything but fruits and vegetables and water for seven days for the first seven hours of every day. You're going to meditate on the word every chance you get during these seven hours. All right? Um, and that's it. Your spirit is going to be strengthened. <laughs> not by the things you're eating, but there's something spiritual that your body comes to understand don't ask me how uh, ask him <laughs> okay that's how he works with me and this is what I call the unleavened fast because I don't eat leaven nothing that is <gasps> raising um, flour because remember the leaven represents yeast and yeast ferments and Jesus body wasn't fermented in the grave amen so anything that you're eating is pure. It's just it's without leaven. Normally, for these this time, I make flatbread. Flatbread. You can you can make flatbread. It's yummy. And um, take some flour, a few drops of olive oil, some water. You can make it into a paste, and you could spread it on a skillet. Or you can knead, knead it like a bread, very, very um, gently. But in 18 minutes, it has to be made in 18 minutes. And you roast it on a flame. So if you have a skillet or a flat pan or whatever, a towel, whatever you got, a baking iron, you just roast it and you, man, there's something about that when you do that on a fast because you're telling Jesus he is the bread of life the bread without the leaven without sin because he is the one who's without sin amen that's why we get his righteousness that's why we become the righteousness of God through Jesus so I don't know it's just it's beautiful beautiful to do it's up to you it's not mandatory it's not something that you have to do as if you want to be used by God then just as this is like a preparation 
a fast unto him, thanking him for the promise of his spirit. <laughs> and it's beautiful because you'll come closer to him. I guarantee it. Just surrender to him and I, I guarantee it. Um, Brenda used to see me doing this all the time when I worked at the sailing company. And after fast, I would eat sometimes. If I was unable to get flatbread, I could eat the leaven. But I tried not to eat leaven at all for the seven days. And now double portion is the Feast of the Tabernacles we're going to do again come sunset. <laughs> seven days. So it's going to be all good. Good things. Amen. All right. I hope you enjoyed this time I spent with you. I hope you enjoyed hearing of the Lord, how to draw closer to Him, how to allow Him to lead. Just remember that He is first and before all things. That whenever you see the sky, know His eyes are upon you. You'll see how comforted you feel in knowing that He's everywhere. His eyes are upon you. But of course, you know He's with you. He promises never to leave or first forsake us he is the loving father of our souls amen all right now i have to go to the supermarket and get a few stuff uh, for the feast of tabernacles and um yeah god is worthy to be praised in all things and he will be glorified amen now i've lost count from april the third so i'm doing it three times however many times or twice whatever twice or three times just not to miss it and I know for this week of Halloween remember the birthday of Jesus always falls on the week of Halloween because they try to block it up they try to hide it but um, to the glory of God and just for the sake of one month ahead we're keeping the Feast of Tabernacles again it's more dancing more food more <gasps> prayer and more sanctification to the Lord and he's gonna do mighty things amen including remove this hiccup in Jesus name <laughs> come on somebody pray for me <laughs> pray for me I receive it who's praying for me anybody praying for me <laughs> so father we just thank you for a little word that we received today that the strengthening of our spirits might rise Lord God and be your strength in you Jesus that You'll be the head of us, and you'll be the guide of us, and you'll be the shepherd of us. We just thank you, Father, that you are Lord, and that we could bring you glory in some form or fashion, in your holy and precious name. Whatever we do, be glorified, Father. <laughs> amen and amen. The hiccup's not going away. I know I need to drink water. I haven't, but I was rushing down my food. So I'll be doing this fast, by the way. Not to advertise, but just to tell you I'm doing fast. Um, I always fast. This is the Inversation. Inversation. It's so weird. And here you're seeing the word. But if I turn it, like, look, you can see that. But I had to do it this way for the other screen. It's kind of weird. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. All right. So who's ready to receive the invitation, Father? I just thank you right now for the time we have with you. I thank you that your spirit is pouring upon all flesh, Father. Thank you that. I thank you for these. I think... I thank you, Lord God, that anybody who would receive this word, Lord God, and wants to be sanctified by your word, your blood, your fire, that they will be, Father, in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Abba, I thank you for every good thing that you're doing and you'll continue to do. Thank you, Daddy. We love you in your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right. Maybe when I go home, I could listen, listen in more in the spirit and see if he gives us some new things in the spirit. But so far, he hasn't. So I only go with what the spirit does, right? So 
<laughs> sorry, where the spirit says, that's where we go. All right, so I'll see you guys home. I'll see you guys home later. Jesus is still on the throne. He's always on the throne. You could go outside and heal people. I'm going to try and round up some people to go out with me and just pray with me. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you. In Abba's name, Jesus Christ.